Praise the Lord. So I'm here in Wexford Town, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for a time in this town, the municipalities were had a kind of a facade on that they could stop somebody preaching the gospel. They misused the municipalities, the district court, in order to try and prevent the gospel being preached. But they couldn't stop it being preached. And the gospel continues to be preached today, even though the high courts are continuing in their corruptions. Now that tells you that no matter what Satan tries to do, he can't stop the gospel being preached if God allows it. So that proves to you that Satan is not in control of events. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus is above all principalities, powers, rulers and dominions. Amen. So Jesus is above all powers. That means he's the one that institutes all powers on the earth. So all powers in this earth are instituted by God Most High. Now we know as Christians that Jesus came to the earth to set, to set us free. He came to pay for our crimes against God. And he came not to bring peace, but a sword. Ultimately, the goal is peace. But to the earth, he brought a sword. And that was a sword of division. He came to divide those who would return to, to him from those who wouldn't. He said, my sheep hear my voice. They will not listen to any other voice. What's meant by this is, when Jesus calls us home, we follow because he's our shepherd. And it's really that simple. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't seek true love, you won't respond to true love when he calls you. And his name is Jesus. But rather you'll serve your flesh, having submitted to the world. Now of course, it's only God who can facilitate repentance. It's only God who can facilitate remorse, regret for your sins. It's only God who can facilitate Repentance, that's significant. Think about the meaning of that. It's only God who can facilitate repentance. What does repentance mean? To repent of something is to turn back. The action is turning back, but the cause is regret. Regret and remorse. So you have regret and remorse for your sins, and you turn back. The Bible says repent and turn again, so that your sins may be blotted out. Repent, return. Amen. The Bible says, return to your first love. So your first love would be Jesus because love comes from Jesus. Right? He's, he's the root and the offspring of David. So the root of David, meaning that David came from Jesus. He came from the Word. And Jesus is the Word of God in the form of a man. So the Bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or in other words, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And then it goes on to say, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then it says, The whole fullness of deity. Now what's the significance of the word deity? It means the authority and the power of God. The authority and the power of God existed in the form of a man. His name was Jesus. That's the word of God. He created the universe. Now, the devil has to submit to God. Whenever God moves, the devil has to flee. The Bible says, resist Satan and he shall flee from you. Amen. So whatever the devil sets up as his next blockade, we will go through it with the power of God. So the devil is always trying to set up new blockades when we go through them. Remember, the kingdom of heaven expands by force of love and light. So we go forth in love. The devil's trying to provoke you. He wants you to argy-bargy with him. He wants you to become annoyed and vexed at his nonsense. But we continue forth in love and so the devil has to flee out of his place so that's what the bible says it says overcome evil with good so as soon as good shows up evil's gone 
it just has to go. When you're loving your neighbour, evil has to go. It has to get out of the way. And though it might even try to enter back in, it just has to leave. Because Jesus is Lord. So when we obey Jesus, the authority of his kingdom is with us, and the devil has to flee. So currently in the High Court of Ireland, the, the High Court judge is failing to test a schedule that they said they would test. Just walking around Wexford now, just telling the people what's going on. Because they're very quick to put the name of the preacher in the local paper when they're talking down his name. But when the court case is in the High Court and at the High Court level, you don't see it appearing in the newspaper. When they're up to their antics, they keep it quiet. When they're breaking the rules and the laws, they keep it on the lowdown, they keep it on the quiet. You won't see that in the newspapers. But when they've something to report, then you see it creeping in. When they've something they believe would be good to report in terms of their narrative and their agenda, then you see them, then it, cre then it creeps into the local newspaper and the text of the local newspaper. But when it's being, when the High Court is failing to do something, they go awful quiet. So, the High Court said that they would test the constitutionality of Section 115 and 117 of the Criminal Justice Act 2006. And I'll tell you, it's all an act because jurisdiction in civil matters does not belong to Gardaí. And so if the High Court of Ireland fails to recognise that, even after it had been scheduled in the High Court case and listed in the High Court case, the High Court of Ireland failed to complete the schedule. And so what are we seeing? We're seeing the High Court of Ireland committing high treason. Why can I say something so strong? Because they're purporting to fail to test something that purports to give members of Angarda Siakana power in civil matters and in civil courts. Not just power or the right to bring evidence, but the right to prosecute on behalf of whoever they choose to prosecute on behalf of. This foregoes presumption of innocence, impartiality, everybody been held equally before the law, and jurisdiction. So jurisdiction is something where members of Angarda Siakana can't operate in a civil this jurisdiction. They can't operate in a civil court. So if you had a dispute, if you had a, I'd say a bus would have fit through there. That's just a distraction of Satan. So if you have um, jurisdiction in a civil court, obviously you can operate there. If you don't, you shouldn't be in there trying to operate. And so we see members of Angarda Siakana trying to operate in a jurisdiction where they have none. They have no power to operate in civil court, so what are they doing in there? Choosing who they're going to represent and prosecute on behalf of. Because a member of Angarda Siakana can't be partial towards one person in a civil dispute. So if two people are having, can you imagine two people having a domestic, and the guard comes around, knocks on the door, says, no, I, I'd be inclined to, to agree with Breda there, so come on you, off we go to the court. You see, a domestic dispute is a civil disagreement. And a civil disagreement has somewhere to go, but it's not the criminal court. Do you see the difference? There's criminal court and there's civil court. Gardaí have no jurisdiction in civil court. They only have jurisdiction in criminal court. So when a guard says to you, you're not breaking the law now, but he has nothing more to say to you. When he says, you're not breaking the law, but that's where he should finish talking to you, unless he's tr asking you the time. You see the point? You're not breaking the law, but, but then the conversation ends there. You can't hinder me any further in what I'm doing. If I'm not breaking the law, you've no jurisdiction. And you're wearing the uniform now, so we can't just have a man-to-man. -man. Unless you're willing to step outside of your job for a moment and talk to me. But who's going to pay you? You'd have to clock out, wouldn't you? Because you're on the pay. So jurisdiction of Angarda Siakana is limited to, si to criminal matters. Please don't touch me. So criminal, criminal courts are, allow guards in, but civil courts don't. Civil jurisdiction does not extend to Angarda Siakana. It simply doesn't. A member of Angarda Siakana has no jurisdiction in civil matters. 
So the Irish High Court should, that should be simple, open and shut. The Irish High Court should say, look, Section 115 and 117 and the ones that feed into it and facilitate, facilitate, or sorry, feed into them and, and facilitate them should be removed from the, from the, the Act or the sections. So, peekaboo. So the criminal just jurisdiction of Angarda Siakana does not afford them the right to operate in civil matters and prosecute on behalf of whoever they choose to prosecute on behalf of because they cannot show partiality. So clearly there's somebody making like sort of a, a, a cat, in, the noises of a cat in heat or something. It's obviously a demonic manifestation. So, the Irish High Court, the High Court of Ireland, are failing to test sections 115, 117, 113 and 114 because they're, they're adjoined. Even though they scheduled and listed them in the High Court case for testing, they're failing to do so. Absolutely, point blank, refusing to do so. Claiming that it remains an open question whether they're constitutional or not, and there's an appropriate case for that. Well, have, what, what, are they going to wait for this case to come along, even though they've said that we need to test these sections? What kind of a nonsense behavior is that from professionals in the High Court? That's absolutely making a mockery of our judicial system. It's absolutely making a mockery of how the administration works. It's absolutely making a mockery of the court case itself. It's absolutely making a mockery of jurisdiction of Angarda Siakana. It's absolutely making mockery of, this, of our law system and the precepts and fundaments of our law. It's absolutely making a mockery of everything that the Western world has put in place to protect our citizens. It's absolutely an occupancy of people who are behaving worse than junior infants. And they claim to be judges in, the, in a high court. But sure, they can only be full of nonsense demons. There could be, there's no other explanation for such um, foolish behavior and idiocy. And it's absolutely the case. Well, it remains an open question um, whether uh, these sections are constitutional or not. Do you know that every other uh, so-called conviction in this court case would be naturally quashed if you test those sections that you're saying it remains an open question about? So it's, they're the most pressing issue of the day. It's the most pertinent thing to test and you're deliberately failing to do so? Abandoning the testing of them halfway through the court case where you listed them and scheduled them. You see this type of behavior couldn't possibly be incompetency. It couldn't possibly be as a result of not knowing. It couldn't possibly be as a result of their ineptness. It couldn't possibly be anything but a deliberate failure to carry out what is their office according to the laws of this state. The fact that those legislations, those sections were passed through into legislature is an absolute mockery of our political system. As though politicians could just write anything they wanted and pass it into law. Whenever they wanted, even though it blatantly offends even the fundamental aspects of our law system. What kind of a party house do they think the High Court is? in this country. What kind of conduct do they think they can get away with up there?
So, if a judge will say, and the High Court will say, yes, we absolutely should test those sections because it would be remiss of us not to, let's do that, let's list them, and we'll have a day in court. When they do that, and it's seen that the circuit court got word of that when there was an appeal in place and said, we will adjourn this appeal on the basis that the High Court is testing the constitutionality of those sections. That's the stage it got to. And the, and the circuit court actually said that. And, it, and an adjournment was granted on that basis. And even knowing this, even after that, the High Court of Ireland midway through the case, not at the start, they didn't revise the schedule, midway through the case abandoned the testing of the constitutionality of those sections and I got no word of that. None. The first time I saw the conclusion of the judge it was already on courts.ie and those people claimed to be my counsel. And that's the type of corruption, that's the type of evil, that's the type of conspiratorial um, behaviour you see now in our government and in our High Court. An absolute mockery of our systems of law, an absolute mockery of the authorities given and who they're given by, we the people. An absolute mockery of our court system, an absolute mockery of jurisdiction, presumption of innocence, impartiality and due process of law. And that's what this adult behaviour thing is all about. It's a mockery. And it's about letting a mob into the civil court because they can't get anywhere near the criminal court to put their bans in place. And then when you fail to do whatever they told you not to do because of their bans, because they've unlawfully been sort of, you know, rocking around the circuit, or the, excuse me, the civil court, then they'll tell you that you have to go to jail. They put me in jail for a month. That's criminal. They knew what they were doing was fundamentally unlawful, yet they did not cease to do it. They knew it. They must have known it. Because a guard can tell you on the side of the street, no, I have no jurisdiction in civil matters. They knew what they were doing was criminal when they did it. Not retrospectively. They must have. So therefore, they conspired to break the laws of this land. There's no other thing... That we, can, that we can see. And that's why they are reluctant to test the sections for their constitutionality. Because with finality, the public must be made aware of the level of corruption at that stage. But they already know. It doesn't even need to be tested by the High Court because a first year in college will tell you that those legislations are fundamentally unconstitutional and should have never been passed in, into a legislature or into the writings. Never. And so, when a guard is being told by his superior, you go and you get an adult behavior warning and you go to that person and you go to... Th and then the superintendent is picking and choosing who he'll represent, even though he wasn't there on the basis of hearsay, prima facie evidence, basically, fundamentally, a complaint and nothing more. No solid irrefutable evidence. And it's not even evidence against you that you broke the law. It's just evidence against you, so to speak. What, what, is, what sort of a nonsense is that? It's not evidence against you that you broke the law because we're here in a civil court, but it's evidence against you that something, uh, that you should stop doing something? But if I should stop doing it, I would have broken the law, correct? When can a guard tell you, stop doing something that's not breaking the law? When can a guard come up to you now and say, turn off your phone? Can he say that to you? No, because you have freedom. The only time he can, he can tell you to stop doing something is if it's breaking the law. You never establish whether something is breaking the law in a civil court. That would be ridiculous. We don't use the civil court to establish whether somebody has broken the law or not. We use the criminal courts. So what are they trying to do? Civilly remove your rights do you see the point I'm making to you? They have a facade that you've done something wrong by bringing a member of Angarda Shiakana into a civil jurisdiction because he's, 
he knows he has no place in the criminal court. He's no reason to bring in there. And so when the guard says, I know you're not doing anything wrong, I know you're not breaking the law, but then the conversation should end. You know I'm not breaking the law, but? But what? Why, why, do you, why are you harassing me then? I, it's like saying, you know, to the young ladies, I know you're not breaking the law, but can you move over there? You're like, why? I'm sitting here eating my crisps. What have I done wrong? I, I know you're not breaking the law, but just go over there, will you? No, you can't tell me to go over there. I haven't broken the law. Don't choke on your crisps. <laughs> or your drink. So guys, there's, there's a reason we have jurisdiction. If two people have a dispute, they can go to the civil court to resolve it. But as soon as it becomes criminal, a, a, you know, a law has to have been broken. Somebody m must have been assaulted physically. So that's when it gets, that's when, it, when, so, when something escalates to physical assault, then it's criminal jurisdiction. But guards have no jurisdiction in civil matters. And we have to draw that line and not allow anything into legislature that offends that line or that crosses it. This is s criminal jurisdiction. Members of Angarda Shiakana operate here. Civil jurisdiction across that line, no guards. Do you see the difference? It really has to be that simple. If you start allowing guards to operate in a civil jurisdiction, you're basically offending all of the provisions and protections in place that keep the citizen relatively free and peaceful. Can you imagine a, a member of Angarda Shiakana coming up to you every time somebody had a problem with you? Your mother said you didn't do your homework. Uh, guard, that's between me and my mother. What? Do you see how ridiculous it would become? Your mother said you didn't polish your shoes before school. Your father's not happy with you. Your auntie said, a person on the street doesn't like your haircut. It would get ridiculous. So we have diversities in society. And we don't have to agree upon them. But as long as we don't, we're not acting criminally, members of Angarda Shiakana have no jurisdiction. They can't get involved. They can't interfere. Now, if they have uh, a report of a crime having been committed, they can question you, but only for so long. There are limitations to how long they can interfere with your life when investigating a crime. So when they tell you, you can't do what is your right for two years, three years, that's a complete blarney. That's nothing to do with the laws of this state. There's nothing allowing them to do that. It's absolutely hideous. It totally offends the laws of, and free, of our land and the freedoms of the Irish. And they say, you know, people, this is the hypocrisy, guys. People will get a picture with the pike man and sing the ballads. But when it comes to actually realistically, in any real aspect, defending the rights of the Irish people, everybody goes quiet. Because I've got me a few quid in my pocket. I got my relative people. But the other fellow. So what has happened? Isn't it hypocrisy then to sing your ballad? about your freedoms if you're not going to be outspoken if you're not going to expose evil if you're not going to expose corruption who do you care about you don't even care about yourself and your own rights because it's only a matter of time before your rights get impeded on if you don't speak up when others are impeded upon so I've been uh, in Wexford for I'd say preaching for about five years and may, maybe it's five years, four years, five years, something like that. And there was a break, of course, when they tried to ban me from, from preaching, which was ridiculous misuse of administrative delays, basically. Administrative delays. Kick it down the road, spread it out like butter over too much bread. But what is seen? I'm still here preaching. I'm still here preaching. So was the High Court judge able to stop me? No. Why? Because there are laws protecting freedom of speech. And the wordings surrounding them are very clear and concise. 
because our forefathers knew that corrupt men would try to stop people exposing them when they get into positions of office and government. Do you see how that works? They knew that people would try to stop them exposing their corruptions, rather the other way around. That they would try to stop people exposing their corruptions, excuse me. So, obviously we see that now when the Irish High Court says, yes, that absolutely needs to be tested. We need to test section 115 and 117 because there's a chance that they might be unconstitutional. Let's call the barristers at law into the High Court. Let's give it a date. Let's get the judge. Let's get the counsel. Let's check the law. Let's get the listings. And they bring everybody into the court and everybody gets paid. And then they say, let's abandon why we're here, what we're here to do. And don't tell your man. And that's what they did. But they said, by the way, all your convictions are quashed. But you didn't do what you were called together to do. Test the constitutionality of the sections 115 and 117. Do you know what they said? Oh, it remains an open question to test the things we said we'd test today. No. Oh, and there is an appropriate case for that. Yeah. Can you imagine arriving in late to your mother and say, Ma'am, I stayed out till 12. Why did you stay out till 12? And you said, Ma'am, there is, a, there is an answer for that. And there is a time to tell you that too. Good night. How do you think that would go down? Imagine if the tables were turned and the guard said, Why did you break the light at, at, at 80 miles per hour? Guard, there is, a, there, is a quest, there is an answer for that question. There is, Judge. There is, a, there is an answer for that question. And there's an appropriate time to give it. And the Judge, what would he say? Okay, well just let us know when that is, okay? No rush. Take your time. Go home, put your feet up. Have a cup of tea. And just give us a buzz whenever you're up to it, okay? Why, when the tables are turned, is it different? Why, when the tables are turned... Do they get to delay and, and not do their job, even though we're paying them to do it? Can you imagine a lad going, right, he'll be around on Tuesday to paint the wall. And you pay him up front, and then he doesn't show up on Tuesday. But he do a dust and the turkey on it and say, I didn't say which Tuesday. You see, the reality is, guys, once you commit to doing something, you're obligated to do it. The High Court was paid to test Section 115 and 117 of the Criminal Justice Act. 2006, because that's why they were called together. Can you imagine if they tested the constitutionality of those sections and it was found that they were unconstitutional, that they would, that they must at that stage, quash all the convictions? So why would they avoid testing the one um, aspect of the schedule, the one thing on the, on the listings, that would naturally quash all the other things on the listings. It would naturally deal with all the other uh, issues on the listings, all the other convictions. So it would have saved them time. It was the most pertinent, the most economical, in ter terms of court time, the most logical, the most reasonable thing to do was test section 115 and 117. There's absolutely no reason for them to fail to do that. Other than a deliberate dodge and avoidance of the issue at hand and before the High Court. And then what do they do? After they quash all my convictions, they accept an appeal from the state a month and four days late without even an application for an extension to appeal. What kind of behaviour is that? That's against the law. Can you, imagine it? you can imagine showing up to the High Court of our, or the district court yourself after getting a ticket and saying, Judge, I'm a, I'm a month late. Will you allow me to appeal it? They'd say, well, you didn't get an, an, an application for an extension to appeal. It's too late. You have to pay your ticket. That's what you'd be told. How do they, why do they get different treatment? Why does the administration only apply to the Joe on the street, but it doesn't apply to the judge whenever he or she has a whim to break the law and what is considered proper administrative duty why, did, why are they not held accountable 
to what we're held accountable to. They don't have any extra pull in that way. They have to comply with the system as it is. And when they fail to comply, it's a failure of the court and it cannot be accepted and cannot pr proceed on that footing. So it remains an open question, they said. So let the question be answered before they proceed any further. Because everything else on that listing would be affected by that question being answered. And there's no good reason why they would abandon the testing of, that sec of that, those sections on that day. None was given because there's none to give. There's no good reason. That's why there was none given. Because it doesn't exist. So let's see our High Court do the job we paid them to do. Let's see our politicians do the job according to the law. Are they, are they, do they not know the law? What are they doing in politics then? They have to at least know the law surrounding um, the writing of legislation and the admittance of legislature. They, ca they can't just write anything as they want, even though it's blatantly unconstitutional, and then add it to the sections in the legislations. And, this, and, this, and the, um, what's it, the statutes, they can't do it. So let's see the Irish High Court in Stephen Tallon versus the DPP do what they set out to do in the first place. Let them do the job we pay them to do. And let them abide by the law. In Yeshua HaMashiach's name, the Lord of Heaven, let it be done. It says in the preamble of the Irish Constitution, in the name of the Most Holy Trinity, that's the God of the Bible, from and to whom is our final end, all actions both of men and states must be referred. We the people of Era, humbly acknowledging all our obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ, who sustained our fathers through centuries of trial. How then can a guard come in a court and say, this man was singing a song about Jesus, so I arrested him. When it says, we the people of Era, humbly acknowledging all our obligations to our divine Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How could a guard get it into his mind, if he knows the law, if he passed his exams in Temple more, that he's allowed to arrest somebody on the basis that they were singing a hymn? Does he not know the fundamentals of the freedom of expression? What's he doing with the uniform on? Is it any surprise that they're wandering into the, into the civil court and out of their jurisdiction? If they don't know the basics. How are they passing their exams at Temple Moor? If they're passing their exams at Temple Moor, lads, and they didn't cog on the test, then there's no excuse for it. They can't say they didn't know. So it's deliberate breach of law and failure to carry out their oath of office. So let's see them humbled. Let's see the High Court humbled. Let's see them do what they're supposed to do. Because I'm not going to be quiet on this matter. They're not going to run away from this like they, you know, they kick. Oh, there's a ticket. You have a ticket. Oh, the guard was sick on that day. All oh, right, forget about your ticket. Or you have a ticket. All right, we'll kick it down the road. All right, we'll deal with that next year. Go and do your driving. By the time you get the ticket, your points will come off your license. You'll be grand. All that kind of crack going on in the high court, or sorry, in the in the circuit court, the district courts, on a daily basis. Sure, is it any surprise at the highest highest level they're doing the same uh, shenanigans because they don't think anybody knows any better, and they'll just get away with it like they do every other day in the district court. Well, guys, they need to wake up because there are people that know the law, and they haven't bought, you know, everybody who knows what they're talking about. They might have bought and paid for every single barrister at law in existence, but they haven't bought and paid for everybody in existence who knows the, the law around these issues. So let them, let them do what they said they would do because they're lawfully obligated to and stop carrying on with their appeals out of time and all of this nonsense. In Yeshua's name. Blessings.